In this video, I'm going to go over how to assemble the Enza I mechanism. So I have gone ahead here and pre-assembled this part of it. Um, this is the main carrier, and all, all I've done is inserted three of the servos. Uh, the reason for that is I sh shot this video already, and uh, 10 minutes of a 15-minute video were just screwing in the screws poorly. So uh, all the 3D prints have only had their supports removed. This one, I've installed the servos, and we'll go through the rest of the process together here. Um, in addition to the 3D printed parts and the servos, I've got some 30 thousandths music wire, which is just a stainless steel that can be bent, uh, a short length of 3D printer filament, this is 1.75 millimeter. I've got one kind of cut uh, servo horn from these guys. It comes when you purchase these. Off camera, I also have all the additional hardware, so the screws and the additional servo horns. Um, I've also got a small like eyeglass Phillips head, a pair of fairly small needle nose pliers, um, and then a pair of flush cutters. And that should be all you need to assemble this. So to start, you start with this, which is I believe what I call the eye yoke, but it's the central part of the eye. This is what holds one of the servos and does the left, right, up, down motion control. The servo nub goes forward in the pocket and there is some channels in the bottom to manage the cables a little bit more effectively. Um, this only gets one screw in it, adding enough material to support the screw from the back. Just increase the size of the servo way too much, or uh, the size of the eyeball, sorry. So. It's a little tricky because everything's so tiny, but just take it slow. And all of the screws, you kind of want to bottom out. There's plenty of room below it, even if the screw size is very little bit. It's bottomed out. So just make sure that the cable is properly constrained and isn't getting pinched. It kind of goes down and around in that assembly. Next is the part that actually holds the eyeball. I call this the eyeball carrier or eye carrier. There's a pocket on the bottom side and on the top side it's got kind of a shape with a groove in it. That is so that the servo horn can fit in there uh, later on. But I, I take the bottom side, put it uh, at the bottom of the eyeball yoke and you have to stretch it a little bit to get it over the servo uh, horn adapter, but it, it's positively retained. It won't fall off once you're done there. So at this point, uh, you would power on the servo. I'm just gonna go through the assembly process, but this is a point in which it is important to make sure that the servo is in its you know natural resting position. So I would recommend plugging this into your controller with the code loaded uh, and giving them power and the servo will snap to its kind of home position. Uh, what that does is it prevents you from installing this horn in a position that once the servo moves, it's gonna snap something, which would be bad. So just, we're gonna pretend that I've done that. That is an important kind of safety of the mechanism uh, step to take. Once that is done, you put the servo horn in, make sure it's roughly pointing straight, and then uh, the servo horn has teeth on it, and so does the uh, top of the servo. So you wiggle it around and then just press it in, and that will couple the left-right part. You can hear the servo teeth, or the servo gears there moving, which means it's installed and coupled properly. On the bottom here, for a little bit of extra support, this is the first place that we use a piece of filament. So you just jab a piece of filament in there. I find rotating it helps kind of find the proper hole. And this piece of filament is essentially acting as a small shaft. So in here, I'm just going to trim this as flush as I can. And that is that. So then we bring back this main assembly. Again, nothing uh, crazy. I've just installed essentially six screws and saved roughly 10 minutes of explanation. Um, this part here, 
the way uh, I like to orient it on the what I consider in my head the left side there is an extra not that shows up on the camera even but there's an extra small little hole that is the left side which corresponds to the side that has two servos facing forward so make sure that the cable is below and push this into its spot take a piece of filament I like to put it through two of the holes it's easier than trying to just get one of them again wiggle it until it sits flush use your nippers do the same thing on the other side got it flush and that is it able to pivot up down left right so that is the eyeball uh, if you want at this point you can install the eyeball so this component on the top there is a notch and that is the side with the servo horn so if you want you can I find it easiest to kind of hook the bottom in then rotate it and snap it in you'll you'll feel when it seats I didn't do it right there it's again it's always helpful to have it kind of pointing forward so that's it set you can hear that there's yeah, the gears move uh, and to get it to go up and down we're going to create a custom push rod to go into that slot we're talking about but i like to put the eye covers on or the uh, eyelids so these have kind of a, a short side and a side that is flush so like this side the radius continues the two sides that are not uh, continuous touch. I don't know if that's, <laughs> there's a better way to say that. Um, take this, slide it in, and just like the other ones, this one's a little fiddlier just because there's more parts to manipulate, but kind of stab that guy in. So you have to watch out on the left side. You see in there, there is room to kind of jab this in way too far. And what that does is when the eye opens, or when the eye moves to the left, it would interfere with that. So you want to pull this back out so that it is not in the way. Cut it flush. And then on the left side. Cut it flush, and that is most of the mechanism. So this is the point at which you'll see if there's any clearance issues. I would recommend, you know, sanding it if necessary. You'll you'll feel spots that are a little bit tighter than they need to be. Um, but that is the eye assembled, and then I can see here that this guy fell out. A little dab of super glue is what I ended up using in the, the final assembly for that. For any of the joints that, you know, you don't want moving around. Um, and then to do the alignment, again, this is a situation in which power on the servos and make sure that they're all in their neutral positions, which I've done. Um, you can see here, installed a horn. This is the horn that's going to go to here. This kind of middle tier one goes for the up down linkage for the eye. And then on the back side, this horn goes to there. Let me just install those. And tweezers can help because. These parts are very tiny. So all of the horns are installed. And the reason you install the horns, and you kind of want them in their neutral positions, the reasons you install the horns is to um, do the measurements for the push rods. So these are their natural you know, kind of resting position. Then we need to take this push rod and turn it into 
or take this wire and turn it into a push rod. So to do that, let me clear some of this out. What I found works the best is you take a length of it that is longer than you need, you bend it, right? We're making a Z-jog, so it's gonna go up, over, and then back up again. And you can take this, you feed a little bit, little bit of it back into the jaws, and you can see here, I've got a decent small Z jog there. And you can take, make sure you've got hardened uh, nippers on your plier, otherwise you will just dent them. So I'm going to take the eyeball out just to make it easier. Sometimes you can use the nippers kind of in reverse. I can sneak it in there. So there is a small hole in the side that you have to visualize. I'm doing this kind of around a microphone and a camera. So feeling just how much resistance there is. So right about there. And you want to mark this with a fingernail. Like just say, all right, we want that to be there. Pull this guy back out. And right at the fingernail, bend it. Yeah. Then same as before, kind of choke up on it, get a small amount. It's less critical on the external. Like the ones that interface with the um, servos are a little more fault tolerant for length. Like the, the one that goes into the eye mechanism needs to be very tiny. The one that goes to the servos can usually be a little bit bigger and it's not a big deal. I'm just bending these to tighten them up, make them a little crisper. And you're going for roughly 90. It doesn't really matter. Cut this kind of flush. And this is roughly one of the servo horns. So you want to sneak this guy in. And then for this part, this is common in kind of RC things. So taking this horn off. To get this on, you have to slide it onto the horn first. And then you snap it on there. And that gives you the, you know, forward and backwards rotation. There's probably a little bit of sanding to be done here. Obviously painting is important, um, but you basically copy this procedure for this horn goes to that hole position. This horn goes to that hole position and the left right motion of the eye is already captured in the kind of internal mechanism. Uh, and then for cable management, I typically just wrap these around, maybe glue them in the back. Just make sure that they don't go, uh, you know, in into an area that has a ton of. Uh, make sure they don't go into an area that has a ton of uh, moving parts, because that, you know, obviously can be bad. This is where I think a little bit of glue assist. So I just had the shaft pop out there. It's easy enough to replace a little bit of glue and stop that. So that is it for the assembly. It, it is a little fiddly. It's a, you know, mechanical assembly, um, but generally once you get it, it stays together. So that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.